Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium. This is Top Tip Tuesday. And today we're looking at X particles and we're going to be exploring particle rotation. So you need this if you want your particles to spin. Uh, that might be random spinning. It might be being aligned to the surface of an object or it might be so the particles are always pointing in the direction of travel. All of this comes under particle rotation. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. So we'll start that five minute clock and jump into cinema. 4D. In this scene we've got a default XP turbulence modifier which is moving around these arrow particles in this nice swirly way and it's looking good but we've got a slight problem. Our arrows are always pointing in the same direction no matter which way they're going they're always pointing in the plus Z. So how do we get our arrows to be pointing, for example, in their direction of travel, which be, uh, is an effect that is often required? Well, what we need to do is go to our emitter. We need to go to the extended data tab and we have to be able to activate the ability for the, ro uh, the emitter to use rotation. So in our general data tab, we have rotation data and by default it isn't active and this is just to save processor power so it isn't um, processing tons of rotation data in a scene that is not required but in this scene we need some rotation so let's activate use rotation by default it's set to set mode and if we hit play we're going to see no difference at all and that's because in set mode we can actually manually set the rotation of our particles using these three rotational axes the the heading the pitch and the bank and on zero it's just the default pointing in the plus z direction but look if we put the pitch to 90 now all of our particles are going to be pointing upwards so that's pretty self-explanatory we can manually set um, the rotation of our particles let's put that back down to zero because what we want to do is we want them to be pointing in the direction of travel. So they're continually kind of orientating themselves to be pointing in that correct way. So we do that just by setting the rotation to tangential. Click on that and now all of our arrows are always pointing in the direction and travel. And obviously for loads of different scenes, this is exactly the effect that you will want. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's just switch this off again and imagine this is a default emitter. So if we hit play again, you'll see that we've got our arrows back without any of that rotation. Let's go to our emitter to the display tab and we'll just change this display from arrow filled to one of the shapes. Let's have boxes filled, hit play. And now we have these cubes floating around. Now, let's say we don't want them pointing in the direction of travel, but we want these to be kind of randomly spinning at different rates in our scene. You definitely want a bit of random spin if you were making kind of dust floaty particles, for example. So you would be forgiven for thinking, well, I'll just get a spin modifier. Let's try it. We'll go to our modifiers menu. We'll go to the motion modifiers and yep, look, we've got an XP spin modifier. Perfect. Let's bring that in. So here we've got our spin and look, operation, we can either affect the spin of the particles or we can affect their rotation, but we'll just keep it on spin. We're going to have it on spin per frame. Let's do the spin amount of, I don't know, three degrees on each axis. Hit play and now we should get some nice spinning on our particles. But no, we don't get it. Why not? Well, of course, we can't because although we've brought in a spin modifier, we don't have rotational data active in our emitter, so it can't interpret this data. So let's go back to our XP emitter, to the extended data tab, and we're going to put use rotation on. But in the mode, because we want the spin modifier to actually control it, in the rotation, we're going to change it from tangential just to non. So the emitter isn't going to be controlling any of the rotation or spin values at all, but we have activated the rotational data. So now if we hit play, because we've activated it, our spin modifier is able to spin our particles. Great. Let's just go back to those spin settings. Now, instead of doing spin amount where they're all spinning at exactly the same rate, let's put that back down to zero so it's switched that spin off. And instead, we'll randomize the spin. So let's click this on. Let's give them, say, two degrees 
random spin on each axis and now we're getting this really nice organic spin they're all spinning slightly differently and this looks great when we're trying to get kind of floating organic looking uh, objects floating around our scene so if you're ever wanting to do any effects which will affect the particle rotation you must remember to go to the xp emitter extended data tab and activate rotation otherwise it won't work